Hey folks, it's Ben with the Red Barn Homestead channel. Uh, did a project today that was fairly cool, so I want to kind of walk you guys through it. It was also about negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit, so really wasn't able to get a good video of it, but we can run with these still pictures that I did take. Didn't have a problem with that. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, this chicken warmer here, and as you can see, uh, I originally had half shot a video for this and then never published it, so I'll get quick to the details here. It's a light bulb uh, chicken waterer. This type of chicken waterer is used in the summertime. It has no ability to heat itself. So what, what I've done is I've underneath of it there installed three uh, light bulbs that uh, you can turn on individually uh, with these switches here that enable you to heat the water uh, and that just plugs into a wall. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of start in our process here. Um, the issues that we were having is number one as you can see by the outside of this thing that's just there's a lot of corrosion in there and not only is it corrosion but uh, if we open it up and look inside um, I used plastic bases for these and you can see the wires that come into the to the side there and everything just got so hot um, that after about three years of use between the moisture in there and the heat um, it started to melt things so we can see where I've changed the one on the left but the other two are are brown and, and kind of a little bit melty. The interior contacts are fine, like there's no corrosion on the electrical side, but what was happening is because of the bases were, were so plasticky and the wires were actually getting hot as well, uh, that we were losing connection. So uh, <clears throat> we were having issues where you'd wiggle the cord and they would go out. So that's, that's not overly cool. So uh, what I'm pointing to here is that the bases of these are actually elevated. So they're actually sitting on little wood blocks and that lets the wires that come in through the side of the can uh, actually uh, have space to be and then they're attached to the bottom of the, the lens part you see here. And I just had drilled a hole in the side and then used epoxy or some sort of caulking to keep the wires from rubbing the side. And uh, you can see on the bottom how the, the white plastic has turned brown and that the wires, one of these is black and one of these is white, they're all black and even the casing is black. So everything's gotten a little too hot, um, causing our, our connection issues. So uh, kind of need to remedy that. So what I've done is, this is version two, is we're gonna be using porcelain bases. Those are plastic, these are porcelain. And I'm gonna run the wires not in the can. We're actually gonna run them under the can. So uh, one more shot of this thing that the old can was also rusting out. Um, so there are big holes in it. Uh, and it's just a, a cookie tin can. So we're just going to throw this whole thing away, just cut off the wires from the outside because all those wires inside are, are possibly damaged. And uh, we're going to start off with a new can. So uh, here's our new can. And what I'm doing here is uh, gauging up the base for it. Um, it'll sit on actually two bases, as you'll see here. But we'll, I drew a line, so we have about an inch around uh, on the sides there. And, and there you go. There's two pieces that... Uh, uh, are cut out and then what I plan on doing is putting a spacer between these two and this is where we're going to run our wires so uh, it'll be a space where the wires will just drop out from the bottom of the can and then rush rush out along there so um, <clears throat> you can see here I've marked where the three uh, light bulb holder porcelain holders will be and you can see where the connections are for the for the light bulbs so what I need to do is actually take a hole saw find the right size one here so that I can drill out the center where the bulb is so I can connect my wires but I still need wood there to actually support the uh, the, the light porcelain light bulb holder so uh, I've got my I pilot drilled some holes through everything and now I've got my hole saw and BAM we do the wood and then we also do the tin. I actually did it separately, and then uh, you turn it till you know your holes line up. So this is what we end up with: is three, three large holes. Um, we put our porcelain bases down, and I guess the key factor here is to kind of maneuver them so that your connections are towards the center of the hole. Um, there's a little bit of offset here between the can and the wood, and uh, of course that's a little bit of metal. Which when you're dealing with electricity, you obviously don't want to short out or touch or do anything. So uh, when attaching the porcelain bases, and this is what we're doing now, uh, you align the, the the electrical connections to be in the center uh, of the hole. Um, so what I de then did is take my wiring harness, which essentially just consists of uh, three sets of wires. Um, because these are just positive and negative, uh, we're only using two wires here. So uh, the black wire goes to the bronze color, which is the center post for our bulb. And then the white wire, which is our neutral, goes to the outside, the silver colored one, which is the, the ground for our uh, bulb holder. 
<clears throat> and so we've got them all hooked up here and you can see the the pigtail wires which are all kind of uh, taped together so they're kind of like one and so we've got our connection there and now you can see it kind of changed the layout of where I'm putting my spacers to be just on three sides uh, and this picture here shows it all assembled so we've got our wires connected to the base uh, because I've screwed down the porcelain to the the wood they're secure and in this picture I've actually now put screws on the corners where all of the spacers are so now it's one big happy piece uh, and you can see here's the gap <clears throat> excuse me where the wires go uh, so they just come out and, and zip out like so and to keep it from being moved or pulled or, or adjusted too hard some zip ties and some screws just secure that line right there it doesn't typically move but sometimes a chicken might bump it you never know so just just secure it there um, I don't have a video of this but it's just a typical three switch setup so power comes in <clears throat> and it the hot is shared amongst the three switches and the grounds all go to a common ground so when you turn a switch on you're providing power down to the heater uh, the reason for three uh, is because you, that lets you vary the heat and the issue we were having was with conventional uh, chicken water heaters is that they run too hot and they're very hard to load so by having this guy you can turn on just one bulb or two bulbs or three bulbs and there's a number written on under each switch there but 60 60 and 100 is because we typically will run two 60 watt bulbs and a 100 watt bulb so when it's only say negative 10 degrees outside you could run two bulbs if it's negative 40 degrees outside you could run all three and that would be enough energy to keep the chicken water from freezing up there gives you that variability for it now one thing i do have to do to the can is i draw a uh, drill a little hole in the side here and that's what that that the hole is you see there that allows you to do a bulb check because when you put the top on you can't actually see the, the light from the light bulb so what that lets you do is you can turn on bulb one and if there's light in there you see the light uh, shut it off turn on the middle one or turn off the end one and that just is a quick bulb check to make sure all your bulbs are working uh, so here <clears throat> we have it installed just like we were before uh, my cord did get a little bit shorter so it's a little bit tighter than it used to be uh, and it sits on a, a, a little piece of I-beam steel there and that's the right height and currently their water is frozen because obviously uh, we were having issues with the old one uh, so I have all three bulbs on and, and in an hour or two it should melt that water enough that the, the chickens will get uh, liquid water that they can drink again and we have a bunch of happy chickens so but if you have any questions on this this one unit here or any comments um, this is design number two obviously the first design I think it went about three or four years no issues with it except that it last year we started getting the corrosion issues and the overheating issues uh, especially when you're running all three bulbs it gets hot in there no doubt uh, but hopefully pulling the wires now down straight from the bottom having porcelain lens or light bulb holders will help and uh, let it you know just so I don't have to ever turn apart in the cold again uh, but be sure to subscribe to our channel for more cool videos like this one uh, to Red Barn Homestead and we'll catch you guys next time